थैंक यू रूप जी रेस्पेक्टेड कलीग्स गुड आफ्टरनून एंड आई स्टार्ट माई प्रेजेंटेशन विथ Uh, in the name of Maa Saraswati, because it's a learning that I'm working on, and with Sadar Pranam to Bisariya Sir and uh, Sri Sri Guruji. Now we have heard that famous saying that the king is worshipped in the country, but Vidwan Sarvatra Kuchite. Now why and what makes a person learn it? Basically, uh, there are certain. indications and certain houses that we need to start with so the charts that we need to look into are of course the diwan the promise and a certain the promise that whether that is going to fructify through d9 to see the power of the planets d24 which is for knowledge d60 and uh, of course few of the houses so again d1 d9 d60 and d24 now in the houses that we see the first and foremost is the second house the second house is the primary education and it is also the house of expression now when i show you the kundli particularly for tagore and mr bachpai you'll see that they were they've got very strong second house second house is a house of elocution this is what we call as vak patuta to mesmerize the person kaan mein ekdam mantra mukt kar dena that is the second house now comes the fourth house now the fourth house is generally when we are learning something new we need to learn and grasp that thing i'm sure you all agree with that point that when we are picking up something new the first and foremost thing is to grasp so that ability is shown by the fourth house so if you see any affliction in the fourth house the person might be intelligent but that person might lack interest in studies So we see many such kids very bright intelligent but they have got absolute uninterest in study so we say they have got dyslexia or something like that tar is a mean but if you remember that movie so something like that so the child is bright but the promise is somewhat blemished so moon plays a very important role here that is as we'll see also in the kundlis then we come to the fifth house we know that's the quintessential house for the studies but not only studies it agar shuk drishti se dekha jaye so the fourth house is for grasping and that grasping knowledge has to be analyzed and turned into workable wisdom that's where fifth house comes into play in addition we need to look into when we are studying the fifth house we need to see mercury and jupiter they play a very important role along with the fifth lord and of course the fifth house from mercury that also needs to be seen now after that we comes to come to the d9 chart sorry i'm sorry the ninth house now a person has completed the schooling so how well will he do in higher studies that is the d9 um, the ninth house chart as we'll see in the horoscope of mr natwar singh our ex minister that a very strong ninth chart indicates very good higher education and last but not the least is the eighth house eighth house is for research now whether it is our national poet gurudev rabindranath tagore or someone like john grisham i am sure my dear colleagues you would agree that lots of research goes into creating a work of art so for that thing the eighth house is also important we cannot ignore that that any great poet or any great writer will have research behind him or her so eighth house has also got to be seen so in addition i talked about other charts that is this is for d1 so along with that we see d9 d24 for knowledge and d60 for overall promises now here a word of uh, caution here or i i won't say caution a word of prudence generally we say that if lagna lagnesh fifth house fifth house, fifth lord or fifth house is afflicted or there is a debilitated planet there is going to be a break in education or education will be tarnished but also we need to do a sukshma analysis and see if there are benefic influences on them because it has been seen that when benefic influence these houses in spite of the lords being weak the person which struggle hard but will overcome it 
I haven't used that Kundli, but I know a lady who was never very proficient in her study. She was always in second division, third division. She was very poor in maths. But once she uh, got to her maths, that is in 11th and 12th, when she went into humanities, she just outshone and today she's a PhD. So uh, generally uh, it has been seen. So be very careful when giving a prediction. See the promises in the divisional charts also. Along with that, we need to see into some learning yogas also. The foremost is the Saraswati Yoga, named after the goddess of learning. So here the three planets play a very important role here. So the first one is uh, that the first criteria is that these three benefits, Venus, Jupiter, and Mercury, should be either posited in second house. Now you can see the importance of second house here, the house of expression or in Kendra and Kona, that is the first criteria. And second criteria is that they should be in a friendly house, or their own house on exaltation, and Jupiter should be very strong. So all these three criteria should be met. And next one is Kalanidhi Yoga. That's a bit rare yoga, but it's a very simple one to master. Jupiter should be in second or fifth house. That's the first criteria. And it should be aspected by Venus and Mercury. And if that is not happening, Jupiter should be in the Venus or Mercury's house. So that forms Kalanidhi Yoga. The person will have lots of skills, more than one skills, through which he or she would earn fame. And something like what we can say is, uh, how who should I put it? Like Amitabh Bachchan. He, as a singer also, he can write also, he's an actor also. Next, next come is Buddhaditya Yoga. And in most of the horoscope that I'll show you, you'll see that Buddhaditya Yoga is always there, where Sun and Mercury are together, close to each other, not compassed. And this fructifies best when it is in the Kendras or three corners and in the house which are friendly to these two planets. Last is Sankhya Yoga. That's also a very rare yoga. Uh, it is here the sixth house plays a very bizarre role, I would say, not a straight but bizarre role. Now here the sixth and the fifth lord should be in mutual kendra to each other. It's a very rare yoga. So um, they should be in one four axis, one seven axis from each other. And if that is so, the person is very learned and authoritative. They say what we call is a daban. In some of the IS officers cases, we see that yoga. That they are very authoritative. You cannot uh, undermine them in any way. So with that, the background, I start with my first kundli. Uh, this is the kundli of Gurudev Ravindranath Tagore. So dear friends, as please note this point. Let's see a very nice Parivartan Yoga between Moon and Jupiter. Jupiter in fourth house and Moon is in the first house. That is a clear indication of a poet. Moon is for poetry. Jupiter is for learning. And Jupiter is getting exalted. And if you see the second house, the second house has got Buddha Ditya Yoga. Can you see them note that? So, we see a strong Buddhaditya yoga here in the house of sun. I'm sorry, in the, in the house of uh, Mars, where sun is exalted and also Venus is posited there. So the Buddhaditya yoga is fructified here where sun is exalted. That means it's a friendly sign. Mercury and Venus is in the second house, moon in the first house and Jupiter is exalted in the fifth house. So we see a very strong Saraswati Yoga forming here. So any questions on that? So, and no doubt, uh, Gurudev can be called as an epitome of learning. And if we see the, could you just scroll a bit please? If we see the divisional chart also, the same uh, promises are even accentuated there. Now, uh, just note, one very interesting uh, fact here, that uh, Jupiter is the ascendant lord in both D1 and D9. Note that in D9 and D60, in two divisional charts, 
the Lord is positioned in the twelfth house, and Tagore got his got his highest accolade from the foreign country. He got Nobel Prize. So he got the Nobel Prize when he was running moons, Mahadasha, and Antardasha of Venus. So we see the fructification also of the promise. Could you go to the next chart, please? The second case is of our respected Guruji Sri K N Rao. Here also we see a very strong uh, learning promise. Now, if you noted, Jupiter was exalted in the fifth house in Guru Dev's case. Now, in Guruji's case, Jupiter, the same planet of learning, is exalted in tenth house. Looking at the fourth house. Now, if you remember, fourth house we discussed was the house of learning and grasping so see how positive it is here again like guru dev guru ji also has got moon in his first house again that poetic and writing the penmanship ability is coming is is uh, given by the lord moon and of course you, we can see a very strong buddhaditya yoga also here in uh, in guru dev's case it was in the house where sun was getting exalted. Here, it, the Mercury is getting exalted. Please note that the Buddha Ditya Yoga is getting its full power here. So that should be noted. It cannot be anywhere because Buddha Ditya Yoga is very common in uh, most people's horoscope because these two planets are generally very close to each other. But it should be taken into account that the yoga should be strong. Now, next are. So we've seen that Mercury is exalted, Jupiter is exalted. Next come the Venus, which gives creativity. So Venus is in his own house. So we see the complete promise here of great penmanship, not only penmanship, like Gurudev Ravindranath Tagore, Guruji can also be called as epitome of education. He was instrumental in spreading Vedic astrology, bringing it to its uh, full glory, spreading it all around the world. So we see such promise. So we see a strong first house. We see a Buddha Ditya Yoga. We see a fourth house is strong. And the 11th, that is the fifth Lord Saturn. Please note, dear friends, that fifth Lord Saturn is aspecting its own house. So the promise gets complete here. So such, so if you note, if you uh, take the analysis down to the D60 and D24, you will also see such uh, promises being uh, reiterated here. Like D1 is the promise and reiteration happens in the divisional chart. So we see that these reiteration is happening in the all these charts. Like for example, if I see this D60 chart, Moon is again in the Lagna aspecting the Moon, I'm sorry, the moon is aspecting the fifth house, its own house, while fifth Lord Mercury is in the ninth house. So we see the promise getting fulfilled there also. Now, could we go to the next chart, please? Now, this is the chart of B.V. Raman. Again, a great astrologer and proponent of astrology, responsible for spreading Hindu astro astrology, bringing its respect back. So here also, uh, if you note, uh, the first and foremost rule, Jupiter. Jupiter is present in, in a Kendra, that is 10th house, in its friendly house, house of Mars. Uh, we see Venus and Mercury in, again, a Kendra house. That is the seventh house and aspecting the ascendant. And moon is in the fourth house with Saturn. So we see again, if you see Jupiter, Venus, and Mercury, a very strong Saraswati Yoga is also forming here. So, and the third lot uh, is Mercury is in a friendly house of Sun. So, and again, if we check the divisional chart, all these. Uh, fructification are being uh, reiterated. In fact, 
not only in G1, if you check in G9 also, the, there is a nice Sankhya Yoga is forming, which is a very rare yoga, but that is also, you will find it forming here. And in D60, the Saraswati Yoga is getting repeated again. So if you check it in D60, D60 chart, the Saraswati Yoga is getting repeated here again. So uh, he was not only instrumental in uh, bringing uh, your, uh, this uh, Indian and um, Hindu astrology to its forefront, but he was also awarded with lots of awards also. So he got the Doctors of Letters in June 1976. So he was running the Markari Mahadasha and Venus Antardasha. So we can see the components of Saraswati Yogas when they are in Dasha Mahadasha, like we saw in Gurudev's also, that in that time, the person is actually getting recognized for his or her learning. Uh, next horoscope, please. The next horoscope is of a, a former prime minister, Mr. Bajpai. So here again, like in all these cases, if you have noticed that moon is in the first house. Now, learned friends, you might say that moon is debilitated here. But if you know that it has passed, it, it, it is crossed its point of debilitation. And according to our respected Guruji K and Rao, when a planet has passed its point of debilitation, it acts as if it has been uh, released from a prison. It starts giving blessings, lots of blessings. And, but the most important part is just see his second house. It has got Jupiter and Sun and Mercury. So Buddhaditya Yoga again forming here like Gurudev Rabindranath Tagore, along with Jupiter in his own house. And ninth house is both, friend, it is a friendly sign for Sun also. So we know that uh, this gentleman was very eloquent in his speech. People used to come from far over to listen to his speech. So uh, we see a strong Saraswati Yoga forming here also with uh, Jupiter in his own house, Venus in the first house, and Mercury with Jupiter. So a very strong Saraswati Yoga is forming here along with the Buddha Ditya Yoga also. So till now, if you have noticed that these two yoga are going hand in hand, Saraswati Yoga and Buddha Ditya Yoga to bring them uh, the person not only great authorship, penmanship, but also name and fame, recognition that his writing is or his work is spreading all around the world. And same as, we find in different divisional charts also, similar promises are getting reiterated. In fact, in his D24, we also see a Gachkesi Yoga in Bajpai's case. Now, uh, could I go to next uh, one, please? Next one is, yes, please. And then yes, uh, as per Guruji, means I'm quoting him because he has just part of past passed out of the exaltation point. So that doesn't mean that uh, he or that planet uh, has gone weak. It, it is still in the party mood till it passes out of the house. So it hasn't, it's something like you've attended a party, a marriage, and you're still happy that effect remains with you for at least 24 hours. So same with the planet. Okay, the next planet, uh, next one is of Natwar Singh. So Natwar Singh was not only uh, known for his uh, education, not only for his uh, diplomacy, but for his education also. And here also we see that there are certain aspects which indicate that uh, his great uh, intelligence. First and foremost, uh, we see that Venus is exalted in seventh house, forming a 
Malvia Yo. Jupiter and Mercury are in the ninth house of higher education following a Buddha Ditya Yo. And Mr. Natwar Singh, he passed out from prestigious uh, college that is uh, this one. Uh, just a minute. I'm forgetting. He passed out from Stephen's College, Delhi, and then he worked from, uh, studied from Christie's College in Cambridge. So we see a very strong ninth house here. If you, if you note here, the Buddha, did, the, in D1, the Buddha Ditya Yoga is forming in ninth house with Jupiter posited there. So he had a, and moon is in the fifth house. So he had an education abroad also. Now, in D1, the Lagna Lord Mercury is in conjunction with the 12th Lord Sun, forming a Buddha Ditya Yoga in ninth house. So that again indicates that higher education abroad. So in ninth house, Mercury and Sun is there. So Sun is the 12th Lord, and Moon is also posited in the Sun's house. So no doubt, Mr. Singh had uh, a checkered career, or I would say a very illustrious career in education, and he studied abroad also and with high amounts of accolades. Next chart, please. Now, till now, I have talked about famous personalities. Now, I'll talk about some contemporary people like us. So, this is the chart of a boy uh, who passed 10th and 12th with exemplary marks and is uh, currently pursuing his medicine. In D1 chart, if you note, the fifth Lord Jupiter is aspecting his own house from the ninth house. Venus is in a Kendra and Mercury and Jupiter in a Kona with Jupiter exalted. A Saraswati Yoga is forming, but please note that it has got a little bit of blemish because Mercury is debilitated. If you see in D1 chart, the Mercury is debilitated. Although the yoga is Anij Bhang is happening because of Jupiter's aspect. So, dear friends, what happened is that this boy got very good result in 12, but couldn't clear medicine in his first attempt. He could clear only his in second attempt. So, like I said, that if you see any affliction in the fifth house, uh, he was uh, he was passing through Jupiter's Dasha. No, it's because of debilitated mercury only. Debilitated mercury only. He couldn't clear and, uh, during that, uh, that period of time. So, but if you see that Jupiter is aspecting uh, that house also, the Lord itself is aspecting that house. So he could clear it, but he had to struggle hard, not in the first attempt. Huh? Because he, he was just on the borderline. So a Buddha Ditya Yoga is or a good fifth house is not enough. You have to see what are the planets that are affecting it. Uh, could I have the next one, please? Next chart. And if you see this boy's uh, divisional chart also, D9, D24, and D60, you'll see those promises there. And yet the blemishes are also there. So he has to struggle. No, okay. So this is my last chart. So this is of a, uh, again, a girl, she is pursuing from her graduation from Delhi University. Now, the interesting part about this girl is that she's not only a topper in academics, but she's all rounder in sports in dramatics and elocution. She has achieved uh, highest accolade at her school level and she is doing the same thing in her college level also. So here also we see that Mercury, there is a strong Buddha Ditya Yoga in the 10th house. Mercury and Venus are posited in the Kendra and her Jupiter is in the fifth house. 
So again, a Saraswati Yoga is forming, and this girl has never looked back ever in her life, whether it is her academics or her sports. See, she's a state level javelin thrower. She has won gold medal in that also, gold medal in academics also. And now she's pursuing her post graduation. She's in, uh, going in her second year now. So with that, I conclude, I conclude my presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much.